Okay. So it's out there and the, the final people are moving into the room. But I think we can start. I see there are some viewers coming into here. So I just start a little bit to introduce you here. We have uh, Anna here from, uh, I guess you're in Germany now. Kids have a dream. We have Leila Pace de Miranda from Molecule IDs in Brazil. We have Rian Alawala, uh, one million business and the Rian School from Pakistan. Relate Lukianska, we hope to have here in a few minutes from Latvia. And uh, Fatim Sarabias from Morocco. And Eric Schneider from Germany as well. And uh, Evan from, where are you now? I didn't hear you. Uh, I think it's in Germany. And, and we have Cynthia. She have should Cynthia. be there. Uh, she is coming into the chat right now. She's in California. So uh, while waiting here for the people to joining up, we have 10 viewers now. So we went from two just a few minutes ago. And when we see some more action, we can start with Anna here to introduce yourself a few minutes, and then we take the people in the row here and go into some questions there. What have you heard so far? What what are your feeling about today? Have you followed the the first mm -hmm. lineup here from Oslo? I leave it open there. I unfortunately haven't been able to follow today. Um, but I'm really excited to see what's going to happen in the chat now, and it's just a pleasure to see people joining from so many places. Well, I've uh, followed a little bit, and uh, I really liked what I hear. Um, I remember these guys. Oh, no, I don't remember what they were called. These edge riders. Edge riders, yeah. In that some pretty cool stuff and what I really like is that it's a rocking network all over Europe and uh, that's pretty rare so far and I have the impression that they are going on a pretty high level um, and I have to say from my past 13 years that I'm in youth leadership and all this stuff globally that uh, I have so far only met one little youth leader in entire Europe who would qualify for a yes jam of the awesome guys of YES, Youth for Environmental Sanity, YESWorld.org, who started youth leadership in 1992. And they have had jams of amazing young heroes all over the planet. And uh, in 20 years, there hasn't been a single one in Europe, and also because people wouldn't qualify for that level. So, uh, and that's really important. Uh, this, this amazing, passionate spirit, you know, um, that makes these people conquer headlines, national television, everything, get big support, is so far very little present in Europe, from my global perspective. And if you see some of these, some of those heroes, you know, how they shine, you know, and at 17 they're four-time Nobel Peace laureates. We don't have that in Europe. We got other people who have a... Uh, 120,000 active youth from 4,000 schools at a global stage with the Dalai Lama, Deepak Chopra, uh, El Gore and stuff in Canada. That's rocked by young people, you know, and that's youth leadership. That's not youth participation. And I had a sense today that for the first time ever, I heard of such rocking people in Europe. <laughs> so thank you very much for inviting me today at last minute. <laughs> Okay, we're warming up here slowly from uh, Oslo. I can hear my own voice in the background, but that's great sometimes. Uh, we have so far two, three hours here with, uh, with a nice discussion in the, close to the, to the water in Oslo. And uh, we will go very quickly through the, through the people here in the, in the lineup, starting with Anna from, I think you're in Berlin right now. Aniksha Richard, Kids Have a Dream. So just tell about what you're doing and we go through the other people and then we have some solutions and some ideas and we take it from there. So first of all, it's a pleasure to join you from Berlin. Um, I've been living here for a year now, but actually my project started in 2006 when I lived in South Africa. 
And I work for a fantastic organization called Nicosis Haven, which was started by a little boy who died when he was 12 years old of HIV. But he had a big dream that he wanted to create a shelter where HIV-positive mothers and their children could remain together. And I was so inspired by seeing the change that this little boy could create even after he had passed away. And I wanted to create an organization that allowed other children from all around the world to be inspired by his story, but also bring the legacy forward. So for the past six, seven years, I have organized workshops in collaboration with local teachers and social workers, where I have asked young people between the age of 10 and 15 to draw their dreams for the future. And after each workshop, I collect the dreams. And now seven times I have organized exhibitions, in, mainly in Scandinavia, but also in Japan, where I have shown dreams from 23 countries mainly to young people, but the whole idea is to use the ideas and inspiration from young people to inspire um, essentially the entire globe, not just young people. The okay. that I, and just the last thing, the project I'm working on right now is to create a database of dreams where um, we can collect dreams from 100 countries and we'll show them on the Berlin Wall for the 25th anniversary of the fall of the Berlin Wall. Thank you. Okay, uh, Anna, I think I have to go out from the from the hangout and go in again because we can't see the other people. But we continue with uh, Cynthia Lagru from uh, California and uh, mm -hmm. hope it will work. It's a very dynamic environment, this, and we're learning from day to day how to manage it. It's a lot of complexity and echoes, but this is how the real life works in the digital space. So welcome here, Cynthia. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And this is a great experience. I love the graphic that's on the Living Bridges webpage. It's a, a bunch of skydivers kind of coming together and connecting. And this is kind of what it feels like <laughs> a little bit. So it's a really thrilling opportunity. And, uh, so um, I'm executive director and founder of Compathos Foundation. Uh, we're a arts and media foundation that um, we do media production, film, and we work with a lot of artists around the world. Uh, we also do a lot of education and research screenings, things like that. Um, we're harnessing the power of the arts and media to inspire transformation, global citizenry, and social action. And um, the whole idea of Compathos is the word compassion combined with pathos and pathos is a story that moves the viewer to action and so um, right now we're, we're uh, initiating a program with youth and students to be able to travel to uh, different places around the world to work with communities to help them tell their stories and I'm really interested in um, you know these kinds of conversations where we can um, identify micro narratives and macro narratives on a global scale and I, I'm super interested in just bridge building between um, what's going on in Europe and America um, how can we bring uh, people together within um, different communities how can we kind of set a fire to this I think that um, storytelling is a huge part of that um, there's so many great stories to tell and so um, Compathos is a real platform to do that. We love to curate and put um, stories that inspire others out there and I've heard so many inspiring stories this morning or this evening. <laughs> I'm in California so um, I just want to thank you so much for inviting me. Okay, we go to Evan. I think you're in German as well, but you are originally from Dublin, Ireland. So tell about what you're doing there. Um, hi. So yeah, um, I'm in Ireland at the moment, and I've just gotten back here after a period of way. Really, I've kind of been traveling since about 2011, and in this time, uh, I just kind of learned about the world of uh, social change and see and like well, everything that we're talking about here and about, I've always been interested in distributed communities and so started to get involved piece by piece. Um, 
attending different events, participating in, I suppose, reading local newspapers, finding out what different governments are offering and everything else. I'm sure you're all very familiar with the process. Um, at the moment, coming back to Ireland, I suppose I've tried to join different networks and I've tried to uh, be effective online, but I feel that there's a, a real importance of connecting people uh, and place and getting the feet firmly on the ground and personalizing the home front. Uh, in Ireland, at the moment, there's a massive amount of need. I'm sure you're all aware of the, uh, the global situation. Um, but there's also a lot of uh, openings there. There's a lot of enthusiasm and... I suppose the double edge of the of the bust in society is that the communities are coming back together again, that people are starting to talk, there's more local innovation and community development. But for a lot of these cases, the tools that are necessary to do the job aren't really available. And these tools for local community development are coming from, I suppose, interactions like this, where we're each learning from each other and everybody has their different set. Um, and as these begin to come together and the stories come together and the sharing if these stories mutualize uh, a value system and an, an approach um, then, like this whole process uh, is aggregating a, a big change in kind of the community in general um, in Ireland at the moment I'm here to to try to facilitate that uh, my background then is in uh, the philosophy arts I got involved with social business and uh, European project development but I teach dance and circus uh, to kids and um, I'm also quite uh, active in a bunch of different uh, networks involving everything from impact investment through the commons, through all of those, all of these uh, modern emergencies. And, uh, um, and that, that, that's really it there. I'm kind of listening to the stories and um, already kind of joining the dots. I think partnerships for change so far, the, the, the thing that's standing out for me the most is the youth work and the potential for linking up uh, youth developments uh, across the world. And then like the girl earlier on from Mama Wahimita, she was talking about selling beads, you know, and I'm sure those same beads could sell in California, um, probably for a, a lot more. And uh, they can sell in uh, networks like uh, the Youth Cafe Network that's uh, developing in Ireland. Um, borders creates a uh, potential for a cultural education for kids who also get to learn the process of, uh, yeah, well, they learn about awareness about the globe, different connections in, and conditions in different places, and also um, about how to build the social structures necessary to, to connect and, um, and have those mutual connections work for each other. Um, um, but yeah, that's it really. Hi. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Eric from Schneider, he was here. Well, hello, hello. Hello. Uh, my name is Eric Schneider, and I'm joining you uh, as the director. Youth leader. Youth leader started as a team to uh, bring the stories of the great change makers of today and their moral solutions. Uh, whether at Lauten, in Ashoka, and all kind of places, uh, in a fresh, lively, dynamic format to the people, and especially to the young generation. Because from my point of view, everybody aged 20 plus usually can hardly upgrade the operating system to run this awesome integral software of changing the world. And uh, many of us don't have the time. Okay, The few that do are here today. But the majority population, it's kind of difficult to get to them. Um, uh, so I really want this change-making world and the new meme set and opportunities for action and especially the embodied manifestation, real people, the heroes of today, lots of youth leaders like these folks um, in schools today. And as you've seen here, these are posters. These are very small printouts. You can print them out big. Imagine an exhibit of 40 such posters along with QR codes, videos, teaching tools, take action packs, and even the monthly webcast tuned to current United Nations days, upcoming is Day of Youth, then comes Day of Peace for peacemakers, then comes UN Habitat for lots of model solutions for changing the awesome city we all want to live in. This is the stuff I work on, and uh, I collaborate closely with uh, these youth leaders and adult change makers, very famous people, body um, because they have the time and they love connecting into the education sector. So mm -hmm. um, I basically also redefine the image of passionate youth as our new highly gifted. So if we have three or ten kids at school, 
who are empathic, who have empathy, interested in global issues, and uh, are social entrepreneurs. Uh, these people are showered with awards, you know, and uh, it can't be that in school we tell them there's no time for this, you should take care of your C in chemistry. So say, look at them as the highly gifted, you know, in music or in sports, and give them opportunity to practice their skills, their change-making skills, in a self-organized learning environment uh, by also benefiting class activities, performing in public, making headlines. It's great for the status of the school too. So that we switch the view of what these talented change makers are like for the multipliers and the teachers in education. And at the same time, these uh, wall displays with posters, with videos, with monthly campaigns, that's a learning environment. It's the same kind of learning environment that, you, that we use at our gatherings of change makers, and they connect with it online through webcasts. So I call this an informal sustainability learning environment. <laughs> so I make leadership congruent with progressive education. And it works really well because I got lots of these flags. And these flags here are by UNESCO. And uh, it's an official project of the United Nations Decade of Education for Sustainable Development. I got four times status with that, you know. So, and that is a very powerful seal of approval for people coming with our poster collections, videos, and webcasts, and thereby show to their teachers, in Germany it's very well established, uh, but also in India, the US, Brazil, that this is high quality. You know, because over there, civil society staff, people don't think it's important for education. So it's a very, it's a golden key. You know, so it's very interesting. And this is uh, the stuff I do. So I believe what we need to give young people is awesome superstar role models, um, because they hardly see those, to make them available every day through Facebook posters in their normal schools. So we override the unsustainable role model meme systems. and. Um, give them opportunity for action with those people. So they're playing music with them or playing football with them, but in this case they're taking action with them and peacemaking, microcredits, replicating amazing model solutions. And many of them are driven by teens. Um, and the epicenter for this is in Cynthia's environment in the US, so where the new 60s are happening and in Canada where teenagers are taking amazing actions today. And that's a very good um, things also for Europe to, to get inspired for what uh, young people can actually do. So okay. that's what I do. That's really great, dear, and I think you already went into the solutions a little bit. And and mm -hmm. now we have Fatim Bias, I think you pronounce you right, you're in Morocco right now. So please tell about yourself a little bit and then we go further to Brazil. Okay, hi. Hi everyone. Uh, I'm Fatim Bias from Morocco, Casablanca. I'm really happy to join this uh, hangout um, about uh, communities, social media, things like that. It's um, for me. I discovered the world of. Oh, can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, I discovered the the world of community. Uh, let's say two years ago during a round the world travel, where I met a lot of uh, people during my trip, and that was the first meeting, that was the first time that I understood how powerful, powerful it was to belong to a community. And then I entered in the startup world and once again I understand how, how pow powerful it was to belong to this community of startupers. Uh, I was in Paris at that time and now I'm back to, I live in Morocco where I started the co-working space which is now based on a community. That's, we want to build a community of uh, entrepreneurs, freelance and startupers here. And we, I realized how um, that uh, we really need to give here in Morocco uh, hope and role models to entrepreneurs because people are not they don't know that they can make the change they don't know that they can build new companies and do things that by themselves they they are more often waiting for things to happen they want I mean the the state to build things for them companies to give them jobs. But they are, they, they are not very proactive, they, they don't have this state of mind. And one of the goals with what we are doing is to try to, to make them understand that they can do things, that they can change their, their world by, by taking this first step, that by wanting to, to improve things. And we try to organize some um, meetings with the, 
with uh, social leaders or, uh, or famous entrepreneurs all over the world to connect them with these uh, entrepreneurs here in Morocco or young people to, to make them understand that it's not, it's not about the money, it's not about uh, your family or whatever, it's about you, it's about yourself, it's about wanting to make something about your life. And this is very um, key in the, in the work we are trying to do. The other thing is uh, I, I, I was very... Um, uh, it's, uh, in Morocco, since four days, we had a, a big uh, national problem. I don't know if you heard about it, a pedophile. A, pedophile. a guy that, that raped uh, 11 children was uh, released by the king. And um, it's, it's very important to see how social media is playing now a big role in our society because that we, uh, thanks to the people, things, uh, things have changed. And it's important to introduce this social media in, in the Moroccan society. It's quite new today to see how social media can be powerful and can change uh, a decision that could be taken by the highest uh, authority here. So thanks. OK, so Leila in Brazil. Uh, what are you up to there? I think you have a small gathering to tell about. Oh, yeah. It. Yes, I have a small gathering there outside. And uh, here is two, two little, just, just three guys that uh, study here with us. So uh, many interesting, I, I love to, to follow in the morning, the morning for me. And the, thank you. And the, in the Oslo events, many really good initiatives and amazing. And uh, these guys here with all these projects, very interesting too. I really like the multiversity. And uh, we here in Brazil, we are working since 1996 in a software company. So it's a company, but what we believe is that any place can have an impact or uh, really do something for the community, our local community here and now uh, like local community too. So the software company receives children from uh, since they are four years old. So there was one guy, one guy here, Mateus. Mateus, thank you, rapidinho. This guy here, for example, he is here. He he came here for first time when he was five. And he studied here with until 10, and now he is 15 years old. And you can speak English? No. No. So go there. And then what uh, I, I want to show is just that we work, we have worked now with more than 1,000 children. And sometimes they stayed here a lot. And what we, we do is ask them what they want to do. So we work with the desire really really the desire even if the desire is something that we can think uh, it's a little bit crazy or because of uh, Disney or because of something television and games and everything uh, we work uh, 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 from this point that is the what they really like and then we interact with them and we have lots of we are a software a technological company, so we have lots of things that they can use to, to develop their own ideas. So they can program games, they can do things like this, I don't know, or I don't know. It's a lot, lots of things, robots, and uh, the other one was with an helicopter here. What's the name of that? It's a helicopter. A helicopter. So, and today, what we intended to do, to join the event, and we are doing it outside, but it's too noisy, is uh, celebrate, we tried to celebrate the future that we could create in 10 days. So 10 days ago, we began to, with, uh, with, with the group that comes here, to, um, what, what, what are we going to celebrate in 10 days? And what we did was uh, like food. So we started to reflect about food, and we tried to bring local food, and then all of the reflections and everything that comes with this. What is local food? Are we what 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 is food for the community? And and that's what we are doing today. It's a gathering. We love to celebrate. We think this is the best to join 
people and to work together. So I'm very happy to be here celebrating the future with you too. And, and inventing it. Yeah. Okay, Rehan, uh, you are the final one here in the lineup right now. You are all over, all over the world, so please tell about you and what your ideas and dreams. Um, thank you, Bert. Thank you, everyone. It's great to listen to all these great people here. Um, I was enjoying uh, Patim about the social media in Morocco. Um, it's very difficult to make friends in Morocco for some odd reason. I don't know what's wrong with Facebook is not very common. I don't know um, for that. Um, well, some of you might know. Basically, I come from Pakistan, and Pakistan faces 50 to 70 percent illiteracy, um, which means that 50 to 70 percent of the country, which is um, 70 to 100 million people or even more, uh, cannot even read their own name in any language. A uh, similar problem is in India, so 700 million people cannot read their name in any language, not even native language. Um, however, mobile penetration is very common, so uh, we have started to make uh, videos uh, which can teach people basic character recognition and basic English in three months. And that's what I've been doing for the last six, eight months. And the uh, latest versions of the videos, uh, we have released the ver ver two versions so far of the school DVDs. These DVDs are available in Pakistan through the local illegal DVD shops. And people can take their mobile phone and pay them 20 cents and get those content installed on their memory card and watch those videos and learn basic English through videos and these videos can be then used uh, for you know Bluetooth it to anyone else or just transfer it. Um, the latest versions of the videos we want um, Rowan Atkins and Mr. Beans to perform them so we've created some mime based videos where people can use uh, the content um, anywhere in the globe for example in Somalia there are 22 languages so instead of trying to create 22 different versions of videos, you know, why not create content which is uh, understandable in by any language uh, person? So that's that's some of the work we have done. Um, I don't know where to share the link. I can share the website of the content. You guys can have a look and give some feedback. Um, I can also share the introduction video. Um, um, it's on rehanschool.com, but I'll share it with Bert here, which you guys can then. Uh, any questions? Okay, uh, I think that was uh, really great, Rehan, and. I would also like to introduce you to Willi Scholl, who is part of the Living Bridges team. And Living Bridges is a type of a bridging community. We try to bridge communities like you have seen today, uh, which share similar interests around the world, but we also try to bridge the digital and the local spaces. And one of our experience over the last two years is that it's really a complex just to make a hangout like this when you do it with Africa more maybe or India because you have energy fallouts in some countries you're not allowed to show it it doesn't work for some moment so an important learning is that you really have to to be open for for change you can't plan in a linear way and be perfect that was the first learning and also to bridge the the local and the digital space, you need a lot of people to bring that space into living. So Willi here is sitting behind and managing and harvesting the information now to other social media spaces. So I would like you just to give you there one minute or tell a little bit what you are doing now, and then we can go back to the panel here and see what is the future for you. You can start to think about it there. How do you go to action? I think Eric here before he had some really nice examples. What, what is the really the key message how you go about the future? But uh, 
delay start a little bit there. Yeah, I'm uh, doing this professionally since 1995 to think about the future trends and innovations. And uh, lately, since 2010 or so, I'm concerned about the future of mankind in total. And so I'm thinking about social innovations much uh, more than before because uh, we are in danger to have too much technocracy and not to think about social and cultural innovation, how we can use social media for change, uh, of course, but even uh, on not high-tech on not high-tech uh, levels, you can imagine to have social innovations to encourage people and to catalyze change and, uh, of course, to have uh, different economical uh, systems or currencies, as we've heard from uh, Nadia Eliman from Edge Riders. She was talking about uh, public health, very uh, radical guy who I met here in Berlin, and he actually <laughs> is living without money, and I hope uh, we have solutions who are more compatible with mass and mainstream, uh, else maybe one day we uh, lose control of all of it and uh, we have no choice and actually we live without money. Okay, uh, now we saw also the, the final contributor here from uh, Gothenburg, Sweden. It's a youth camp going on, I think it's the fifth day. And uh, I see some people there, so we let you introduce you. Can you hear us? Uh, yes, Sam, hello. Tell Hi, about. Maybe you can introduce. Yeah. Hello, my name is Hamuna. I'm from Georgia. Uh, I'm now using Exchange Project in Sweden, and I'm very interested in this conference. I'm very interested in what's going on. Because the same problem is in my country as well. I think it will be good and very to hear another kind um, and we're from Tipsnetwerket in Belgium, which is the hosting organization. So it's lovely to see you all. So now I Clara want to join. No? Okay. <laughs> so yeah, we've been talking about and empowering youth all week. And it has been very interesting like to learn about how it's done in many different countries. We are five countries of the country. The country has a flavor in every youth culture, has its own way of empowering um, and creating jobs and so on. So, yeah, it has been a very nice experience. Yeah. And we have some more people there in the, in the uh, hangout as well. Um, do you hear us clearly now? Yeah, we can hear you, but that is a little bit blurry there. So we we go to to Anna in uh, Berlin there, and uh, if you have some headset, it's uh, it's great. Otherwise, we continue. Okay. So. Okay, Anna there. Uh, from what you have heard here, what what do you think is the really key to go to the to the to the next step? What do you mean? Wait, yeah. If we are going to the to the future, what and to empowering youth, what is the most important part? What what should uh, what should uh, institutions do? How could you support the uh, movement forward? Sorry, can you hear me now? Yeah. Good. Did, did you... Did you just miss what I just said? I think my microphone was muted. 
Yes, yes. Sir. Okay, Thank sorry. You. I'll just repeat it quickly. I think the most important part is that we need to learn how we can design organizations that have um, the ability to go viral very, very quickly um, and empower all the people in the network to, to become active. So it's a totally different approach to how we build organizations in the past that was sort of a top-down, but I don't even want to say a, a bottom-up because I think we have to rethink the way that we create organizations to allow people to be a much more networked um, and much more connected on a global level. And Cynthia from California, what is your message ahead? What is the most important things you can do as an institution or to empower youth ahead? She went away there, so we take uh, Fatim from uh, Morocco. Hello. Oh, okay, sorry, my video connection just went out. Um, I think that can. Am I live on this? I guess so. Um, for me, I'm really interested in just the idea of press freedoms and keeping um, our freedoms to, uh, to communicate. Um, I think that's a really important part of democracy. Um, so I'm looking for ways to uh, collaborate and form systems where people can, can keep their communication systems open, regardless of the challenges. Can also see here from Latvia, Renate is joining from Latvia. I may, I think you have maybe some problem earlier. So tell about yes. what you are doing there. Can't hear you. I can't hear you, Renate. Okay, we go to Brazil to hear your view there. Okay, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, so your question is what uh, I think is about the, what is the next step in the future, to build a, mm -hmm. a future that empowers youth. Mm -hmm. what, I, what I think is that uh, the, the, the enterprises like mine can do something and they can really um, empower the community. Uh, everywhere I can do this, everybody can do this, and I would love to see not only the children in schools, but uh, this community taking care of them, and not only the children. Uh, when I, I know that the, and I think all these initiatives of everybody doing what they want to do, even if they are a little bit different from each other, it, it's it's very very healthy and it's if you stay connected like we are now it's even healthier. So anything that you want to do, if you really think uh, that it's good for the future, I think you should be doing. So it's what everybody is doing now. And um, I, I think this kind of the the, the 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 enterprise, the companies begin to really work with people. It's Sounds like a bit, little bit crazy, but I, I, we are doing it since 1996, and we don't like here in Brazil. Many times we go and we invest where uh, out far from where we are, and we opted to we choose to work in our environment, in our community, near our community, and not put children in schools. Uh, even if schools can be very nice and different and everything, uh, if, but uh, they are artificial environments always. And 
companies are not artificial environments. They are the city. Everybody, everybody can. I think it should be really nice. And today, I ask it just to finish. I ask it the three guys that are here today what they think about the future, what they want to the future, how they see the future. And one of them said, I, I think it's good uh, to have more police and a clever police, more well trained. And this, I think I'm going to talk with him like. Uh, until he changes, <laughs> because I, I really don't think that it's the future that we should uh, build, a future with more more uh, people taking, like, like police, it's like this. And that's, that's it, that's what I think. Fatim, from Morocco there, do you have some ideas there? Um, actually, there's something that strikes me is how to build a future where you have people that are like you were saying in Pakistan, um, either that are not uh, have never been to school, have never studied, so it's have don't know how to use social media. There's really a big challenge with these people, and at the same time, um, on the top of uh, our companies or governments, we have people that are that that have this. Uh, old way of thinking that is so far away from what the youth want and what they want to build. So there is really a huge gap between the two. So I, today I, I don't have a, a solution to give, but there is definitely a, a, a big things we could build by putting this, I mean the youth that, that want to change things, people that are thinking with the old way of thinking. How can we build something together? I don't know, but maybe by talking, starting to communicate and see what are our goals and how we can, how we see our future together. We also lately here came to Lane Hortzell in Bangkok. So, can we have some input from there? What is your view on it from from Thailand and uh, South East Asia? Are you able to hear me? Hello? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, said my mic was, was mute. Well, uh, first let me, uh, hello group, I'm so late, I have to do a special TG fix the internet here, and I need to be here. I just want to say that to start out. Okay, and uh, what are you doing there right now in Bangkok? Uh, at the very moment, it's uh, 1.30 in the morning, and um, I'm, I'm in Bangkok for meetings uh, related to the Asia Institute. And what are you doing there, and what is your engagement? I know you're involved in the new type of collaborative systems there. How could they be part in uh, engaging youth? Okay, yes. Uh, work is philosophy and technology uh, related to um, especially in third world countries and development. Um, also working in projects and so on. And the 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 efforts to uh, well, I mean, on, on the groundwork is education. And I'm uh, helping to get. Uh, okay, how do I stop you here? Turn the camera off. Okay. Can you hear me now? Okay, Will. Yeah, yeah, we can hear. Yeah, it's fine. It's much better. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm working on uh, some farming projects, educational product projects, um, teaching, and so on. Uh, peer to peer is a little more complex for the youth, but we can uh, also work in those kind of projects too. We can see some part of there, some celebration. I think it's in Brazil. Can we get some voices from there? What you are doing? Some some inputs. Uh, 
Now this is just for you to, to see a little bit what we are doing here, but it's so noisy. But there are many people here, and we try to do this. We brought many things from our houses, and, and we this is this I knew since she was a little girl, <laughs> and that's it. Okay, okay. I think it's yeah. I think it's time to wrap up here a little bit. It's getting uh, evening in Oslo. And uh, I think basically what you have seen here today in the Hangout is really if you are going to do the digital space, this is what you can, uh, can encounter. It will be a lot of uh, noise. It will be different to difficult to coordinate. But if you use some collaborative tools working, you can do quite a lot. And what we started a week ago is uh, basically connected these projects and 75 other projects around the world who were interested in taking this, uh, celebrating the future to the next level. So we have a document here that we can share to you all and that you can contribute with your ideas, with your links, and we will harvest it later and continue from here. And I just yesterday got uh, an input from Haiti, a guy on Stanford, who have a social tech challenge with the first time when they bring entrepreneurs from Haiti and Dominican Republic in two weeks from now to work on sustainable solutions. So we will provide them the data from uh, celebrating the future so they can increase the value on the people, the connections, and the ideas that has been put into this. So in that sense, we hope that you can continue from here and to really connect people and ideas in the future. And hopefully we can join up again in a few months or having a Google sessions and you can just relax in the digital space and be a change maker. So that is what we try to facilitate and to inspire other people. So thank you for tonight and hope you will be back later. See you. Bye-bye.